Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, I know it's been a while since I've been on here kind of talking and giving tips and insight, uh, especially from an independent music perspective or the underground game as it goes. Let me straighten this camera up a little bit. But uh, today I want to spend some time, I got some time to talk a little bit about, you know, all these uh, major acts and major labels now selling their catalog. As y'all know, we talked a little bit about Future selling his catalog. Uh, since then, Justin Bieber sold his catalog for half a billion. Uh, we've seen, you know, other producers sell their catalog. Zaytoven sold his. Uh, and now QC sold theirs for 300 million. Uh, that's, they had a 10 year run and were able to flip that into 300 million. Um, for the QC label and the QC catalog. So, um, you know, I think it's great. I think, you know, uh, the whole reason to have these assets like a catalog, like music, is that you can always turn that asset into cash. And uh, we don't know what these guys got planned or what they're trying to do. Um, so their cash could turn into something even major. They could be investing in something bigger, uh, joining a different kind of more of elite kind of group with the investment that they have and turn that 300 million into something great. So uh, whatever they do with their business is their business. And I'm proud of them either way uh, for what they've done. They kind of carried the torch for independent labels in the South, uh, especially in the last uh, 10 years for sure. Now, what does that mean for independent artists like myself and like others like us, independent labels like, like our label? What does that mean for us in the grand scheme of things? And I'm, I'm here to tell you guys that um, music compositions, uh, publishing rights, streaming rights, mechanical rights, that has now become the new uh, in vogue kind of asset class on Wall Street and for the rich, okay, and for the wealthy. Companies, as you guys can see, are buying up these catalogs, making these songs, making these compositions into real life uh, assets, like an asset class, just like stocks, just like any other investment, uh, bonds, whatever you can think of, they are figuring out, figuring out with the streaming the way it is that you can have these assets that generate income on a consistent basis. And one thing I know about rich and wealthy people, especially Wall Street people, is that they're always looking for a return no matter how big or how small it could be. Typically, in most investments, they're looking for anywhere between a 4 to as high as a 10% return on their money because if their money is invested, they don't have to pay taxes on it. And that, that small increase can be back invested in other things. They can make an income for themselves where they don't have to work or build anything, but their money's making money. So that's what this whole play is for the wealthy. Uh, they're trying to really get these assets to build, uh, to make it kind of generate some type of investment income for them. So that tells me that as an independent label or independent artist, that uh, now your music is probably more valuable right now than it's ever been in the history of music. Uh, now your songs, every time you go in the studio and make a song, it's a real life asset. You have to treat it like a real life asset. You have to manage your catalog. Um, the, the way I manage my catalog is I've got a lot of old songs that I've started to digitize and put back out there. But I'm also creating new material. I'm also doing shows. I'm also on the road promoting the old material as well as the new material as well to generate that interest and that buzz to where my catalog becomes an even greater asset than it was before. But uh, I'll be honest with you. I just got back from Houston. Uh, I got some hard copies done, CD hard copies. And I'm almost sold out of the hard copies I got made in, in just a week's time. Music is so valuable right now. Um, I'm, I'm being honest with y'all. CDs right now in some places, depending on how rare the CD is, if it's a first press, first edition, some of the CDs nowadays are going for as high as 20 bucks a copy. Uh, some even higher than that. You look on eBay, I think Blowfly, what you need right now is going for about 99 uh, to 100 bucks a copy for original print right now. Uh, that's never been higher than it is right now. Vinyl, your average vinyl or record nowadays is going to be about four. It's going to be four sides, so it'd be two records because uh, we you know we made longer albums back then. Those are going for like 50, 55 bucks a pop right now. Um, that's a lot of money if you think about, you know, if you're pressing up a thousand records or thousand pieces of vinyl, you can make you some nice change real quick. 
And the labels have figured this stuff out. If you go into a record store now, you go into Josie's Records, I guarantee you're going to see everything you grew up jamming, all the rap lot stuff, all the Three Six Mafia stuff, uh, all the Cash Money stuff, uh, anything you can think of is in vinyl, in print right now, and it's selling. You go in on a Saturday, there's people in there buying vinyl. I'm just, I'm just telling you from my own eyes, if you don't believe me, uh, go see it for yourself. Or go look online and see what the prices are for some of this material. So music, the value of music right now is at all-time high if you have a hard copy. And then the streaming part of it, that is going to start to increase. The reason why these companies are buying up these assets is because the new wave of streaming or how music is going to be consumed has already been invented. We may not know what it is yet. We may not know what it's going to look like. But I promise you, somebody somewhere knows what the next step is. And they're heavily investing in cat and capturing as many songs and catalogs as possible because they're getting ready for the next wave of music. Um, from what I've been hearing, some of the insiders I work with have been telling me that it's inevitable that YouTube is going to spin off from Google, right? YouTube is kind of the last, uh, YouTube is the biggest music streaming service in the world, number one. They also pay the least, but they're going to be spinning off YouTube. If this happens, then that means that YouTube is going to really increase their subscriber base uh, dramatically, where they're going to include YouTube music, YouTube TV. So those that are content creators on YouTube be expecting to make more from this. If you have music on YouTube, that could mean more money for you. Because when they separate it, they're going to have to figure out a way to generate revenue. And the only way to do that is to start charging or really hone in on subscription services and add revenue. So that means more money in the pockets for content providers, whether it be music or whether it be a podcast or whatever you're doing in video. So get ready for that because... If that happens, that's going to change a lot and the revenue is going to increase dramatically. The other thing to look at is when you look at services like Spotify or Apple Music, their subscription subscription bases are increasing, although incrementally, little by little, but they are increasing to the point where it's going to have to happen where they change the, uh, they change the pay rate. And I think the pay rate will increase uh, here in the next few years. So just imagine what if the pay rate was to double? for Spotify or for Apple Music or with the increase of YouTube? Uh, what if there's another service that comes online uh, that increases the pay rate? What if the N NFT space starts to really crank up? You know, now that we're going into the metaverse, now that you have AI technology, um, because now with AI technology, you can tell a, a search engine like Bing or Google to write a rap for you that sounds like Future, write a rap that sounds like Blowfly Cottonmouth. Well, who's going to get paid for that? Right? What are those intellectual rights lie? Who's going to get some of that money? They could say they want to make a beat like I make a beat. But now, what if I'm able to get my digital code attached to that beat and now I can make money? If you notice, if you guys are putting out music on a consistent basis like, like we are, you notice that they're very, very laxed on the rules when it comes to who made the beat. Do you have rights for the beat? I mean, right now, I could, I could record on somebody else's beat. Put it out on Spotify, put it out on YouTube. It's going to track it. And it's going to send it back to me. That tells me as a producer, the more beats I have out there, the more music I have out there, the more money I'm going to make no matter who does a song or who makes a song. So I'm not saying all that to say, if you're an independent artist or independent label, step one, digitize all your old music. Try to get it out there. Try to get it digitally coded so it can be tracked. Uh, because if you don't do it, I guarantee you somebody else will. And then second of all, keep going out there, keep making hard copies, keep doing shows because I'm telling you, people are buying music. I spoke with a gentleman while I was in Houston. He comes down here from overseas, comes from Japan and buys up in bulk. I mean, he goes to Rap Live, buys in bulk. He goes to other distributors and buys in bulk. Uh, and now we have a relationship where he's buying from me in bulk. So as soon as I'm pressing them up, I'm getting them shipped out to him in bulk and in mass because overseas, especially in Japan and different areas like that, they're still buying physical copies. Uh, they want to collect these items. So uh, don't discount what you've done in the game. Make sure you work that, but also do new stuff as well. Manage your music like an asset. Manage your catalog like your biggest asset. And I guarantee you it may take some time, but once it starts to really roll, 
This is what they call mailbox money or passive income coming to you on a consistent basis. It may start out small. You may only be able to buy a cup of coffee every now and then. Next thing you know, you're buying a tank of gas every now and then. Next thing you know, you're paying a car note or paying a bill every now and then. And next thing you know, you're not only paying a bill, but you're supporting your lifestyle and putting money in the bank. It just takes time, but you have to get started at some point. So again, uh, treat your music like an asset, man. If you guys want to tap in with me, have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, and also check out for some of the new music coming out as well, too. Until next time, y'all, y'all stay tuned. Downstream click.